Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. In today's video, as you can see, I'm not in my home theater, but I'm in my man Scott Newby's home theater. And today for the first time, I'm gonna be experiencing 146 decibels. That's insane. So guess what? I came prepared. I've got some earplugs. So we're just gonna get an initial reaction. Have not heard this setup. After we get done with the demo, then I'll go into a home theater tour, share with you all of his equipment, all of his setup. So with that said, Scott, let's see what you got, brother. All right, guys, before we even get into the tour, I literally have never experienced that amount of bass in my entire life. <laughs> Holy cow. Okay, I'm looking at the screen and I could not tell if it was my eyes that were moving or if the projector was moving. So I'm really excited to be here. Scott, thanks so much for having me. Anytime, buddy. We're gonna go through a complete home theater tour, show you what he's done in really a small space. And so one of my desires um, to share on the channel is that you can have a dedicated home theater or a dedicated space in a garage, in a living room, in a bedroom, in a, a, a loft. And so you don't have to have a massive size room. And so I'm excited to share with you. So with no further ado, let's get to the tour. Hey guys, welcome to my home and we're gonna take a step downstairs into my theater and uh, we'll show you what we got going on. Just a couple movie posters and trying to represent some of the gear I have. I don't have all that gear anymore as I'm waiting on some new signs. I, most of the clips has been gone, the SVS is gone. Be replacing that with a Panasonic and a JTR. Just a couple little signs here and there to try to give us that feel. After you break a few of the movie poster frames, you uh, just bite the bullet and screw them all down. We found that out the hard way when we lost five at once. So, um, haven't lost any since we put four to six screws in each of them. So, that's a, that's a free little tidbit of information if you wanna save a few bucks. And now let's take a step into the room. My room is, uh, we took part of the basement, made it a kid's playroom, and the other part I got to turn into a theater, which is f about 14 by 16 feet. And uh, since the whole room is on a slight platform, it gives us about seven and a half foot ceilings. So not a, not a large space, I'd say a small to medium space, but it's, it's working good for what we wanted for a, for a 7.1.4 setup, running nine subs in here though. Um, currently we're running the JTR Noesis 228s in here. Um, which I currently had the Klipsch Ultras in this place for, I've had those for about 10 years and was looking elsewhere for a different experience and these have definitely fit the bill for exactly what I was looking for. And uh, I'll give you a quick little peek at them. These are 
They're his two -way, these are JTR's two-way model with dual eight inch drivers and uh, they are four ohm, 1200 watt RMS. Um, they, can, uh, they can really dish it out. I've had close to 60 people over here since I got them and uh, they've all been very impressed. A lot of those guys were returning guys from the clips set up and we can all agree that the improvement has been quite drastic. So uh, they are sitting on top of PowerSound Audio V3611s, dual 18s in each cabinets. Um, Youth Man kind of caught me in the middle of a transformation at the moment. Um, but I've been slowly switching my whole setup over to JTR, but I'm still using the power sound audios up front until they're replaced with 4000s. Here's a little peek at these guys. Dual 18s, 1920 RMS a piece. The left center right and the left and right surrounds are identical, all two 28s. Um, just some movies and stuff, really kind of couldn't decide where I wanted to put them. As you can see, another screwed down movie poster. Now on the back wall, um, which are the only Klipsch Ultras that I have left, we're running the 525s, which um, will soon be changed over to the slanted 810s from JTR, but they're, they're serving their purpose for right now. And for Atmos, currently I'm running the Klipsch Pro 8 inch. Um, I installed those when I built this room about two years ago. And I still gotta work on taking those out because those will be changed over to the slanted tens as well. These, I can't pull these girls down because they actually tight fit in there. I didn't, I had the magnetic ones in there before and they would fall on people's heads during demo. So we switched over to these grills. Um, the projector that you're looking at is a JVC 590R 4K ship projector. I've had that for about two years as well. It replaced an Epson. Um, really enjoy it. It's been professionally calibrated. Beautiful picture. Haven't really had any needs to look anywhere else. It's, I'm still blown away by it after two years. Do you see the back wall and the these are, those are just cheap black curtains because I couldn't decide to do what, those are like $5 a panel at Walmart. So it was just something to give a theaterish feel and kind of black out and darken the room a little bit. These three seats are uh, Berkey line seats. They are manual. Um, I actually bought them used off Facebook Marketplace. This guy down here, we don't know who he's made by, but somebody traded me a case of Mountain Dew on Facebook Marketplace for it because he said he had a weird chair with only one arm, and if anybody wanted it, he'd take a case of Mountain Dew for it. So I made that drive. They are sitting on a platform that I built that's sitting on 16 SVS isolation feet that have four butt kicker LFEs mounted to the platform. And the reason for that is a couple different reasons. The butt kickers I used to have mounted directly to the seats. To me, it, it was a, an unnatural experience. I wanted everything around me to shake, just not my butt. So, and then also I have little ones in the house so when I get home from work. It's nice to have that rumbling and tactile feel and not wake up the entire house. It's an arcade game I got for Father's Day who don't like Mortal Kombat. I mean, I grew up on that stuff. Popcorn machine that nobody's allowed to use. Now starting with the amplifiers, the top one you're looking at is a Rotel 1080, a 200 by 2 amplifier. 
That one actually runs the rear surround. So right now that is powering the Klipsch 525 Ultras. The amplifier that's right underneath it is a Sunfire 200 by five. I currently use four of those channels to push my four Klipsch in ceiling Atmos speakers. And then the larger Rotel on the bottom, the 1095 um, pushes the 5 GTR Noesis 228s and that is actually 400 by 5 because the 228s are 4 ohm. I'm using AC Infinity fan on top just to keep it cooled down. Um, it don't ever really run hot anyway without it but for a little bit of insurance. And the Noesis 228s take all the power that that takes. I mean I could actually if I wanted to run more power through them but it's it's been plenty. Looking at another, my surround left. We got a lot of kids in the house, so we, uh, and youth man was coming and if he had a sugar tooth, I might feel I stack up. So cash out my savings, 25 bucks, grabbed all this stuff for him. Up top there, you just got a, a run of the mill Sony $100 record player that I grabbed from Best Buy because there are a few records that I, I do like listening to. It sounds okay by no means. It's of audio pile grade, but it, it's good enough for me. The refrigerator that I, I made look like a bomb didn't go off from some movie scenes for the videos to be presentable. And then starting at the top there is just the 4K box that Comcast gives you when you uh, when you subscribe with their service. I don't really use that often. Underneath that is the Panasonic 824K player that I give. I watch all our movies on. We I try to stick with all physical media because that's to me one of the best ways to watch it. Um, I do all my demos and everything off that. Right underneath that is the Marantz 7702 MK2. Um, at most preamp. Um, I run all XLRs from that to the power amps. Um, I know a lot of people, they, they can't decide if that's better or the same, but I just went ahead and did it since I had the opportunity. Um, underneath that, you'll see four matching crown amps, the XLS 1502s. Each one is bridged in the four ohm, 1550 watt. Each one feeds one of the butt kickers that are mounted to the platform. So, if I can adjust it how I want, how I have my <clears throat> Marantz calibrated is my sub one is all of my subs because I have them all calibrated together and my sub two is the butt kicker so I can add or take away that effect. So if it's late at night, the subs go down, the butt kickers go up. That's Xbox 360 that tries to block some of the messy wiring. I'm not even sure if it works. Um, PS4 Pro. Um, we do the VR and all that stuff whenever we get a chance. Just some games and s some records and the cabinet's just full of microphones and stuff because I do get into the calibration of it and which I get a lot of questions, a lot of people ask me about the calibrations and all of that is done by me through the mini DSP um, 4x10 that uh, allows me to control all of the subwoofers and do time alignment and uh, custom house curves and pretty much lets me make a nice tight response. Um, I'm lucky in this room that I get some very low response down into the single hertz, um, which I really got to start playing with once I got my hands on. Um, one of my favorite pieces that actually sits behind the seats. So. Now that you've pretty much seen the room, there's a lot of magic going on behind the seats. That the first one up is the is a PowerSound Audio V1801, and right next to that is a PowerSound Audio V3600, which that area will soon be replaced with a, what is right next to it a JTR Captivator 6000, because my end game is for two Captivator 6000s behind this seat and the Captivator 6000 has definitely been the biggest change in this room in my experience. Um, it's a Captivator 4000 
with upgraded 6,000 watt amp that does run off 240 volt um, and does allow me to get down to seven and a half hertz in this room and I can reach 10 hertz just above 120 dB which I would never had the chance to experience before. Hey guys, I wanted to just point out to you that there is a door right behind um, these curtains that I put up and this door during our very first get together after getting the JTR 4000 um, before I upgraded it to the 6000. I had a bunch of guys over here and they all wanted to see what it had and we cranked it up and this door was slamming around like crazy. So we put about 14 drywall screws in it and I had a guy standing at the entrance door physically holding it shut with his hands so we didn't have to sit in here and listen to door flaps. The guy sitting in the first seat, unfortunately, got a nice part of ceiling in his lap. So um, temporary hold on to get together and we ran out to the garage and got some fender washers and a bunch of screws. And you can see that unfortunately it's caused some damage and it isn't the prettiest thing to look at, but it, it's working. All right, guys, we are here in Scott Newby's house, and over to my right is Jeff Permanian, the owner and president of JTR. Uh, I flew up here yesterday and heard an incredible setup, full JTR setup, and so today we're in my second experience with JTR, and once again, completely floored, completely. Now, you're in the transition in your theater, uh, really trying to go to full JTR, correct? Yeah. Yep. So we've got uh, kind of some mix match stuff. We've got JTR uh, center channel, two fronts, um, some power sound audio uh, subwoofers. In the back, we've got some clips, but over the process of time, um, one thing I've always tried to teach you guys is that build it over time, enjoy the journey. And there's always another thing that we can tweak, but I'm telling you, there's a couple things I would love to share with you about this setup. Number one, when we were watching like Terminator, we uh, cranked that up to a pretty, I guess just a little bit above reference. So it's kind of normal what you would listen to. Um, the demo that we had earlier today, massive crazy bass, that's not what we experienced for movie. That was literally for entertainment purpose. Um, but for the movie, bass was incredibly deep. When um, Arnold Schwarzenegger is slamming that guy up against that train, and when he went um, just going through, I guess, sandwiched in between there, this was going nuts. One thing I figured out, and I saw in every single demo, is these seats are manual recline, if I can find the button. So as I'm leaning back like this, after every single demo, I ended up like this. Literally these subwoofers behind me would push my seat out. And so I would be in more of a reclined position after the demo than before the demo. But what I noticed is at no point was the bass ever muddy. It never distorted. Um, these subwoofers uh, combined pressurized this room like crazy, but it wasn't overwhelming. And again, I've always tried to say that just because you have ridiculous horsepower. I mean, we've got, how many 18s in here right now? Nine 18s. So there's nine 18 inch subwoofers in a relatively small home theater. But the reality is when you get them dialed in and when you get them calibrated properly, they sound great, blended seamlessly. It's not overwhelming. You don't want your mains you know, overpowering your subwoofers and vice versa. You don't want your subwoofers overpowering your mains. And Scott, you've done an amazing job at getting all this calibrated. Um, we went through some um, really high SPL, some other demos, some um, ones from like Bass Mechanic. And what was the one that we, we hit, what, 10 hertz? Yeah, that was a Bass Mechanic's uh Suck my bass. <laughs> Some that was a ten hertz version. A hundred and twenty-seven. Yeah, hundred no, one hundred twenty. One hundred twenty point seven. Yeah. One hundred and twenty point seven dB at ten hertz. 
Go try it with your setup. Play bass sucks. Is it bass sucks? Suck my bass. Suck my bass. The bass boosted version. The bass boosted version. Try that. Okay, no, don't try that with your subwoofers. There you go. <laughs> if you've got some 12 inch subwoofers, 15 inch subwoofers, don't do it guys. You're gonna be buying new ones. Um, and you're gonna be buying something similar to this. But man, phenomenal. We listened to, um, I always wanna say A Fault in Our Stars. It's not that, it's A Star is Born. Phenomenal, incredible. The, the imaging here, the vocal quality, the detail in her voice, um, just beautiful. And that's one thing that I'm really, really appreciating. I've always loved the sound of horn-driven speakers. That's just what I like. Um, and once again, this is a different series than I heard yesterday. These are the, the dual eights. They have a different tweeter in them. They're a ported version. I guess his is reported too. Um, but just very controlled. I mean, very controlled. We, again, we kind of at, at certain points, we would go a little bit above reference, maybe one or two decibels above reference. And through the entire performance, there was absolute integrity of the speaker. At no point did they even sound strained at all. Um, just beautifully done, well-crafted. Um, I keep telling Jeff after every demo, I'm like, you've done all right, man. These are phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. I've never, literally, I've never heard anything quite like this um, in go into different home theaters. Absolutely, absolutely impressed. Um, we listened to, uh, what was another movie that we listened to? The demo. So we did we Terminator. Did and two from the stars born, then it was all music. Okay, yeah. yeah. So my goodness though. Um, so really one thing I wanna do is I'm trying to do with our home theater tours is give these guys an opportunity to share with you maybe some things that they've learned along their journey. Um, some things that they've done well, some things that they would have done differently, and maybe some advice for you guys that are considering building your own home theater. So um, Scott, once again, man, thanks so much for having me. I'm grateful to be here. You've got an incredible setup. Um, you've done a beautiful job taking a small space, which a lot of you guys probably have a small space. Um, you may not have a dedicated theater room, but maybe you got a bedroom, spare bedroom. Maybe you have a single car garage that you're thinking about, man, I could convert that. It's not real big, but maybe that would work. And hopefully you've seen in a small space like this that you can get some ridiculous performance and just get a great Dolby Atmos experience in your setup. And so Scott, kind of think through in how, like, how long ago did you begin your home theater journey? How long ago was that? Um, in, in this room, um, two years. Okay. This was my first dedicated space. My last 10 systems all been living room, shared spaces pretty much. This was um, where I could put everything where I wanted and the wife didn't really care. Um, what, I, what I do down here were the other places I had to go around, furniture and vases and stuff like that. So this room I've had my hands on for two years. I'd say my biggest mistake with this room is... We used to live right down the street from here, and um, between paying the mortgage on that place and the mortgage on this place at the same time, um, I kind of rushed to get the room done mm. on limited funds um, when I should have taken my time and did things a little bit nicer and put a little bit more into the detail. So I rushed to get in the room, and now every time I want to work on something, I have to move a ton of equipment out of the way. Mm. Um, so I guess patience, you know, obviously you don't want to wait your whole life to do it, but definitely have some patience. So I, it, home theater has definitely taught me that over the years. Um, all the equipment changes in here. Um, I, I'm sure a lot of people have seen my setup through various groups. I ran the clips for 10 years and I was super impressed with them. That's why they sat in there for 10 years. Um, it wasn't until I got introduced to the, to the JTR lineup that, I knew that there was a substantial upgrade out there. And obviously we know that the hobby isn't very cheap. So mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure I made the right decision. Mm -hmm. um, so I bought the left, center, and right. Um, played with them for a couple of weeks. I was completely blown away. And then I bought the surrounds. And slowly all 
the speakers I my end game will be a full JTR setup and that's not to knock the Clips brand or Power Sound Audio. I've had great experiences with them too. It's just this is that another it's at another level that I wanted to go to personally. And I've had roughly sixty people or so and some of you guys watching this might have been some of the guys over here and pretty much everybody's had the response as youth man and I even told these guys as I was sitting here not only was I excited for Youth Man to experience it, but I was excited to experience it again, which might be silly because I can come down here anytime I want. But it, it's it's definitely it's definitely blown me away. Absolutely. And so one thing you mentioned about end game. So when you look at the future of what your home theater, the newbie home theater, looks like, what changes are you looking specifically to do? I know you've You've got the five JTR speakers. Kind of what's your next step and what's that process kind of look like for you? Well, in the front of my theater, as I'm sure you guys see in the video, and some guys even tease me that my center channel is sitting on a $5 milk crate from Menards. And that is what it is. Um, but I do want to get that sunk into the wall, and then I'll go with an acoustic screen mm -hmm. so I can hide the center channel. My step after that will, um, the PSA subs in the front will get sold, and then I'll purchase the the JTR 4000 talls, mm -hmm. um, which I'll probably have turned into the 6000s, and then they can flank underneath the screen. Um, unfortunately, I can't do that now because um, I would have no place to put my center channel. Um, the surround clips THX ultras I have will go, and those will get moved over to the slanted 10 from JTR, mm -hmm. and then the Atmos speakers will get removed probably as my last step, and that will go to the slanted 10s as well. Um, for Unless there's a big change in, like, Atmos or DTSX, I'll stay with the same preamp until format changes. Um, even though I'm underpowering the JTR speakers because they can handle up to 1,200-watt RMS, I'm pushing 400 into them now, and they could literally go louder than I would ever want to yeah. sit down here and listen to. So other than just upgrading the stuff that isn't um, JTR now, I mean, that's pretty much where we want to go, and it's it's funny because my wife has actually sat down here with me multiple times, and her biggest thing is she can't believe how crisp and clean it is because she's watched 100 movies with me throughout all my setups, and she's her biggest thing is now is she can't believe how clear the dialogue is. It's literally like, not to toot my own horn, but I mean, like somebody's sitting in here playing the piano and, and singing to you. Um the, I've been a bass head, I guess, kind of-ish my whole life. I like tight, controlled bass. I never experienced the super deep bass. And a lot of people, oh, between the clips and the PSA and all that, you know, why come you're, you know, just going with the, the JTR sub? It's because if you see Youth Man's face after the 120 dB 10 hertz demo, that's exactly why I went. Oh, because um, the first time I experienced that, it's addicting. As everybody knows, if you get something that you've never heard before and it's completely yeah. crazy, it's it's addicting. Yeah. So I, I'm, I've am i had this JTR sub for six months now, and like I said, I was sitting here with goosebumps during some of the demos still. Absolutely phenomenal. Scott, one thing you mentioned too is your screen. And so one thing I didn't realize, Scott, you've actually painted the wall, right? Yeah, um, like I said, we were yeah. tied on funds because we redid this whole house as a rehab when I got off of work every night for months. And pretty much I just put the drywall up, mudded it, sanded it, painted it, shot my projector on the screen, mm. made sure it was level, penciled it out and built a frame, painted it black, went to Hobby Lobby, got some black velvet on sale to put on the sidewalls to kind of deaden it down. And I mean, I got a 132 inch screen for, you know, like 50 bucks. 50 bucks, guys. And so the reality is, you can do some of these things that would make it very, very affordable. A lot of people, one of the big comments I get all the time is, oh, you must be rich. Far from it. I'm not rich by any means. I don't think Scott, are you rich? No. Are you rich? I wish yeah. I was. No, we're not rich. We're everyday average guys just like you are. We just have a passion for this just like you do. And the, the deal is, is if you will build it over time, look for creative ways to, to fund it, to make it, affordable. If you can't go with a $2,000 screen, there's some great DIY options. I've got about maybe $400 at most in my screen. 
and it's beautiful. It's an acoustic transparent screen. So, of course, when you put yours behind there, he'll have to get some fabric. Yeah. But fabric is cheap, guys. And so you don't have to have a high end, ridiculous, um, you know, massive uh, price point screen to get a beautiful image. The JVC looked fantastic on that. Clarity, details, colors, beautiful. Um, you know, and we were talking even about, you know, Woody, he's got a, um, an E shift projector. And, you know, would you go with um, the 4K, you know, native 4K JVC? And even the uh, home that we were in yesterday was, um, that has a, a native of 4K. It's a JVC NX, uh, I think he's got the seven. seven. Yeah. And he's been over here and he's like, you know, there's a difference, but my goodness, there is a great picture quality even in an E-Shift. And so the reality is just get something that you can afford, get something that fits within your budget and just go for it. And I think another thing you mentioned too is, is having a plan. Kind of think through long-term. I know one of my big mistakes building mine is I would just get something to settle instead of kind of figuring out what my end game wanted to be. You'll save a lot of money if you can just say, okay, here's where I want to be, and then begin to map out a plan on how to get there, whether that's, um, you know, do a garage sale, man, go through some junk that you've got lying around the house that isn't doing any good, sell it so that you can upgrade your subwoofer or your speakers or your projector or whatever. And so... But man, Scott, this is this has just been a fun day for me, man. I have never experienced bass like that in my life. I mean, literally, that was insane. And at one point, it's kind of interesting, during our conversation off camera, you mentioned prior to this setup. So we've got how many subwoofers? 918s. So there's 918s. Prior to this, you had a couple more, didn't you? Well, I had 418s. I had... Yeah, and then I had two PB16s and four PB2000s, so that's 10. So I had 10 subwoofers down here before, and I actually got rid of a subwoofer. I mean, but we went up in size, but I actually got rid of subwoofers, and I ended up picking up 10 dB throughout the whole range. But then also before, I could never get below 13 or 14 hertz, and now we're flat to 7.5. 7.5 and you're just like going, yeah, I know, because I made those. Jeff designed these. And man, guys, if you ever can find somebody near you, even if they're not near you, travel. Um, we had Scott uh, Fout. Mm -hmm. He came over with a friend. 10 hour round trip. 10 hour round trip. Now, granted, he was coming to buy some speakers, but he got a chance to check it out. So if you're in the community, in the in the home theater forums, what groups are, are they involved in? Uh, Scott's an admin on uh, Home Theater for Everyone. Okay. So check out Home Theater for Everyone. Great Facebook group there. Um, and you'll be able to see a lot of demos here. One thing that, um, that you're kind of known for when you show these guys is we'll take people upstairs, or you'll take people upstairs, crank up the system down here. And as you can see in this clip, their stuff literally shaking upstairs, literally about to walk off of his countertops and his tables. Doors are shaking. There's a solid core door here in the theater room. And as we were playing bass notes, that literally was <laughs> slamming and shutting. Um, and at one point you mentioned you could see the light yeah. coming through the door as it would kind of move. That's insane, guys. Absolutely insane. But overall, man, this has been an amazing journey for me. Jeff, thanks so much for allowing me the opportunity and, and kind of coordinating all of this and bringing me up here so that I could hear firsthand what a JTR experience is all about. And I'll be honest, guys, my just my, my thought is next level and game changer are kind of the two thoughts that keep going back as I've heard these two setups. And, and one thing that's fantastic too is we've heard it now in two systems or i have and we've heard it for both home theater and two channel and some guys say well you can't really have a good two channel setup you can't really get good music in a home theater you kind of sacrifice one or the other and even in my home theater um, i don't feel like i get the best two channel experience for music but here the previous one music incredible 
Home theater, ridiculously detailed. Um, your ears are going to give out before the speakers do, um, by far. But holy cow, guys. Thank you so much, man. Absolutely. This has been absolutely a blast. I'm glad you made the trip. Man. It was a lot of fun. All right, guys, I love home theater bass. In fact, home theater bass hurts so good. But after hearing newbie set up, it took my bass experience to a whole new level. In fact, newbie's bass hurts so much more. Now guys, if you want to pick up either one of these t-shirts, I'll have links to it down in the description below. If you've heard newbie set up, maybe you'll want to pick up the newbie's bass hurts so much more. Well guys, hope you have an incredible week. God bless, and we'll catch you in the next video.